Hello, this is Todd Luck, and this is a review of the Trials of Ultraman number one from Marvel Comics. So this is the follow-up to the original uh, Rise of Ultraman miniseries from Marvel Comics. And so let's take a look at the cover, or at least the one I ended up with. Um, this was not the cover I wanted. Uh, this is a variant cover that just ended up in my box. They had no other copies left of this issue. And so it's well rendered, uh, but I don't get it. I mean, this is the old school Science Patrol logo, which is fine, but like, why are there flowers? What is this supposed to be of Ultraman? I don't know. I mean, it, it is nicely drawn though. I'll give them that. I just don't understand what it's supposed to be. This was the actual regular cover for the issue by Art Adams, and it is awesome, and I really, really wish I could have got this. This is actually illustrating a scene in the actual issue. It looks great. Ultraman's fighting a monster. You can even tell they're underwater. We got the, this little ship down here with all this uh, dust on the ocean floor. I mean, it just looks so cool. So I'm really glad that they've kind of stepped up their game on the covers and are actually showing Ultraman being Ultraman and doing stuff that's in the issue. So kudos on that. The artwork continues to be a little too loose and sketchy and minimalistic for me, but it gets the job done. It's not bad. I just would have preferred a different art style on here than what we got. It does start with a very brief monster battle, though we barely get to see the monster, unfortunately. But he here's where I would say that it's a lot better. First of all, it's Ultraman fighting a monster, and they actually put this monster in the show, actually drinks oil and is found in the water. So Ultraman is actually fighting him in the ocean near an oil pipe. So that is at least in context for what the monster is like, even though, you know, everything that made that monster interesting and fun in the show really isn't here. It's just there to kind of be there for a few pages to just show Ultraman blowing up a monster. But there's still a couple nice touches put in there, like Ultraman having to kind of clean up the damage afterwards and, you know, not not being able to make it to the surface in time uh, before he reverts back to his human form. In this, this comic, when his timer runs out, he reverts to human form. In the show, it's a little bit different, but this is a, you know, a new version of Ultraman that does its own thing, so that's okay. So things have progressed from the first issue. Uh, the Science Patrol now wears, you know, the Science Patrol outfits from the old show. In the first miniseries, it seemed like Science Patrol was this ripoff of Men in Black. Uh, they were this secret organization that wiped people's memories to keep monsters secret. Um, here, they've actually revealed their existence to the public because monsters are now showing up, you know, all over the planet. And, you know, it's met with cynicism. Basically, they take uh, some of the nonsense, the conspiracy theories about COVID and basically slap monsters <laughs> in the place of COVID, which is okay. I think it works here. I just hope they don't take it to, you know, kind of a stupid level where people are like cynical about Ultraman, even though they're seeing him save them from a giant monster that's about to eat them. You know, you know, a little bit of cynicism is okay and realistic, but too much can just get silly. So we'll just see where they take it. And really the only other thing that happens in the issue other than uh, Hayata talks with his dad for a few pages, is that it ends with a follow-up on the cliffhanger on what happened to Dan Morboshi, who we know on the TV series was Ultra 7, and so, you know, next issue will kind of deal with that. Um, it is still glacially paced. It is still super slow. It's impossible to tell from this first issue where it's going, but I will say this first issue was surprisingly okay. I had a ton of problems with the first mini series you can watch my reviews i did one for every issue and it was like you know kind of watching a slow moving train wreck but this is okay i don't have any particular problems i didn't feel like my intelligence was insulted i didn't cringe i didn't laugh at the comic you know in a way that was unintentional i did, just didn't laugh because there really wasn't any particularly funny gags here um but it's an okay comic and you know, and I, 
look forward to seeing, you know, if the okayness becomes good at some point. Here's hoping. So this is an extra sized issue that has a little bit of extra content to it. So there's a couple of these kaiju steps, uh, gag pages with Pigman, and I still don't find them funny, but they are well illustrated. What I do find well illustrated is this backup story that just has really gorgeous artwork that I really, really wish was on the main story. I really wish this was our series artist instead of who we got. Um, the only, my only qualm is that, like, why do we need space elves in Ultraman? For some reason, this is like in the Power Rangers uh, series over at Boom Studios 2 where they have, like, aliens that look like elves. I don't know. Um, I don't think it works with the aesthetic of either series. But um, other than that, though, I mean, it's, it's still a really well-drawn space elf, right? And really cool-looking monster. And I just really love this artwork. And I'm not going to spoil this story. Uh, let's just say the backup is just another uh, series of cryptic hints dropped at, you know, what could be going on. Uh, they're still kind of building up, like, where the monsters come from the alien infiltration of the science patrol, et cetera, et cetera. And hopefully at some point, they'll decide to have that come to fruition. Maybe in this miniseries, maybe in a future one, but hopefully we're going someplace. That's, that's, that's my hope. So overall, um, you know, it's hard to look at this in a vacuum. I mean, if I look at this in context of what happened in the last issue of the last miniseries, you know, the story still isn't good. But if I look at this in the vacuum, like, oh, well, the Science Patrol is just buying monsters. This is actually a decent Ultraman comic. I don't mind it at all. Um, it's not great, but it sets up the potential of perhaps getting there at some point, maybe. We'll see. Or they've got, a, this is probably going to be five issues as well. So they got plenty of time to screw this one up too. So <laughs> we'll see. Um, I'll be, I, I guess, because this is so slowly paced, I guess I'll do an issue-by-issue issue review because there's just no way to tell, you know, how this is going to end up just based on the first issue. So I'll do another review of the second issue, and we'll see where it goes from there. All right, like and subscribe for more videos, and until next time, see ya.